Yo, everybody, just hang tight for a bit. Come back in about 45 minutes or so to catch the beginning of the match. Uh, I'm just going to be getting some things ready with Carve here behind the scenes. Yeah.
We're just getting set up here. Fixing some audio settings. Transitioning from one job to another throughout my day. Um, so just give us a few minutes here. All right, just waiting for Carve to jump in here with me. For those of you who don't know, Carvelin and myself, this is Hamtaro. We're both members of GGPR. We make content, we cast, um, we're involved with CS, Valorant, Overwatch, World of Warcraft. I do not play League of Legends or Dota 2. But I am involved with uh, a lot of these new FPS titles that are coming out as far as making content, casting, etc. So give me just a minute here. I'm trying to make sure Carve's able to get in the proper Discord with me before we hop into GoTV, which I think the GoTV is actually about to go up a few minutes early. I'm going to go ahead and confirm that before I walk away for just a moment. So we're maybe connecting, maybe not. What's going on here? Let's see if it boots us back out because we're too early. Oh, looks like we're going in. Please excuse my neighbor's dog barking. I'm going to close my window right now.
Carve, welcome to the broadcast. Hello, hello, hello. Testing, testing. You sound great. You can keep an eye on chat in case they say anything about our microphones. All right, Carve, you can hear me okay? Loud and clear. Just doing a quick check here. All right. GGPR Academy versus Dean's Online Friends ESCA Intermediate coming up in eight minutes. I'm joined by Carvelin, a South Bay superstar here in Los Angeles. For those of you who don't know, the South Bay is uh, all the beach areas here in LA on the south side. Carvelin was known as an Overwatch player over here, but he plays a lot of Valorant. Does content creation for Valorant and CS and Overwatch with me, so he's joining me again. I was saying a few minutes ago before he joined us, for those of you who don't know us, we're also both members of GGPR for content creation and casting, editing, other things we do. Was that a good description of you, Carve? Yeah, I mean, I'd say I died <laughs> games. I was playing a little bit Dead by Daylight earlier. You know, I like to explore realms, playing some Fall Guys as well. I have not purchased Fall Guys yet. Maybe I need to do that tonight. I did do, note. Do it tonight. Okay. Do, do it tonight. Maybe it's we'll, really fun. Maybe me, you, and Bear need to play in. tonight. Let's do it, dude. Get a couple it's... buddies going. It's a great game. I uh, I did note to the audience that I do not play League of Legends or Dota 2. I'm more of an FPS based, I... RPG yeah. based lad. I would say the same, you know, World of Warcraft's a game I still hold to my heart. I haven't played a lot recently, but I played some World of Warcraft, Exploring Valorant, Dead by Daylight, Fall Guys. I've never played League of Legends or Dota. Uh, that didn't appeal to me, and none of my friends were playing it, so I just never got into it. I do have a lot of respect for their tournament scene, and I have a lot of friends that are obviously obsessed with both games, as I'm sure you do as well. But GGPR, we actually do not have a League or Dota 2 content creation division right now, so we'll see. Maybe that'll change in the future. I would support that, to be honest. I think GGPR needs a professional Fall Guys team. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, no, that's that's where this conversation was going. Considering how many interactions Fall Guys gets on social media and Twitch and elsewhere, yeah, <laughs> I guess that's the move. <laughs> so I'll be doing play-by-play -play analysis. Car will be joining me on overall analysis and color commentary, similar to how we do at most games for those of you who haven't joined us before. Unfortunately, our last cast for Advanced, the other team uh, forfeited. Maybe some of you were here for that. So looks like tonight that's not going to happen because it looks like potentially one of the co-captains for... Dean's online friends is already in the server, so looks like you know there is at least some activity going on here, Car. As we wait here in pregame. Well, I'm ready for today's game. Excited, ready. I'm gonna watch a good game. See what's going on today. <laughs> Official start time would technically be between 9 p.m. Central Time and 9:15 p.m. Central Time, which would be in three minutes and 50 seconds from now. So we'll, we'll see how many players are in the server in the next five to 10 minutes here. 
Once again. I got my water and, and my beef oh, jerky. And yeah, I'm ready to watch that's, the game. That's what I was going to say. Just got all my uh, resources here as well. So that I don't have to leave my home office for the next several days. <laughs> We'll just celebrate, uh, if we get this victory, even even though this is an unbiased cast, maybe a slightly biased cast, but obviously we give credit where credit is due, so. If Dean's online friends make some extravagant plays, well, we're definitely going to comment on it, don't worry. And it looks like DOF is indeed connecting to the server we've got three members from both ggpr and dof in the server currently once again for those of you Are who you shoot me uh oh yeah let's, let's yes tomorrow. <laughs> it, it is indeed up before the actual match time this time which is good appreciate it. i'm on my way now And I'm in. Yeah, I didn't think it was going to come up until about 10 minutes from now, potentially, but it's already up, so. Looking good. Once again, for those of you who are just joining us, this is Hamtaro on the play by play. I'm a longtime CS player. The CS 1.5 and 1.6 competitive scene. I'm joined by Carvelin who is a longtime Overwatch and now Valorant player, who's also becoming involved in the Counter-Strike scene. We're both members of GGPR for content creation and for casting, and we're looking forward to bringing you a very exciting match tonight. I think we're both just relieved it's not another forfeit, so <laughs> I'm sure something interesting is going to happen here. First, I'm uh, relieved it's not a hundred degrees today. Oh yeah, that's the that's <laughs> the next topic I was gonna comment on, and also the fact I before I forget, this is the first time uh, our first commentary on overpass of ESCA season thirty five for either the advanced or intermediate team. So we'll see how this goes. In accordance with the coin toss slash knife round, in my opinion, this is a somewhat historically counter-terrorist sided map. Although, like I say on every cast, I'm sure those of you who were with us last time are sick of me saying this, but I'm sure a lot of other people would say this is a very even map or even a T-sided map. I would once again disagree with that. I still think it's a somewhat CT-sided map, so we'll see if my opinion uh, has any bearing after we go live here. Looks like we're still only three members from each team here, but that's fine. We're still about 30 seconds out from that official start time. Once again, this is Hamtaro, joined by Carvelin. Welcome to the stream, everyone. I'm sure... If you diehards are already in here, but we're just getting the word out now to some of our some of people who may not have known the stream was live. back to the topic of survival carve it is indeed not 121 degrees in los angeles again today yeah <laughs> it is fortunately in the 70s so carve and i are 
not going to melt. We're not melting today. Not bef today. At bef least. Not before this cast is over. No. <laughs> Yes, Hawaiian shirt. This is a live feed you're looking at of Go TV right now of DOF versus GGPR pregame. This is not going to be a forfeit because we've already got eight members in the cert nine. So we're just waiting on one member from DOF, which means this will officially not be a forfeit because according to ESCA's official rules, you can go live with four members if it does come to that. So we are officially having a match tonight. <laughs> so if GGPR happens to get terrorist first, I'm really interested to see if they approach this aggressively right off the bat and if they do i could see a couple aggressive ecos followed by maybe potentially an entirely aggressive first half maybe they'll uh They'll pick up some some steam from how well the advanced team has been doing. The thing about the advanced team is they have that that interesting luck with the low health. Let's see what. Oh uh, yeah, team. I don't want to say I'm luck. <laughs> I don't want to. That would be almost a, that would almost be a, <laughs> offensive to if, right. if the advanced team is listening right now. <laughs> I'm just messing with you, but. <laughs> But yeah, no, it's true though. You're saying hyper focused, and we're joking. But seriously, when when low rider and some of those guys go down to ten health on the advanced team, they just somehow slither away from the enemies, get a flank, still get another one to two, even three kills sometimes when they're still at ten health. Which, you know, when it comes down to it, if you're going to be getting kills consistently with that low of health. Ultimately, what that means is you're not missing a step. Every step you're taking is mathematically coordinated to a T if, if you're not getting shot with 10 health. Whether you're walking, not walking, crouching, going up a ladder, staying silent. Because um, it seemed like there was a lot of rounds in that advanced match. I think what you're getting at is how did... How did Lowrider and some of these guys on train not go down when the other team must have been communicating their locations, you know? And it, it and another thing that was strange is they kept dodging HE grenades as well, which is like, man, if the IM team can start implementing some of those defensive tactics and some of those dodging tactics i don't even mean the dodging tactics in a you know it's not like they are being overly passive it's just the advanced team is just really good at predicting movement y you even saw the way they they're already turned away when they're predicting flash grenades that's one thing you know the im team could probably implement a little bit more of this match definitely a lot of the times, though, what once you know someone's dinked, you kind of let your guard down as you know the enemy team, just because you think, oh, I got it easy. You know, they're I know they're at ten health, I know they're half health, so you kind of just push it aggressively. Sometimes you lose that fight, you know, and then you have the advanced team that just has a hyper focusness, and they're just gonna make sure they get the pick, and they gotta stay alive. Right, and even though they've got the experience, it's you know the academy team's got a decent amount of experience as well. They've got a couple rank A players in here, not too far off from rank G. The advanced team has, I believe, multiple rank G starters, if I'm not mistaken. So for those of you who don't know, J Leader is actually the all-star of the academy team. He's normally a somewhat aggressive rifler. Noda 
seems to have stepped up as GGPR Academy's main offer. I believe he already was before the season started. And it looks like we're... Let me see, is there a coach in here? Are we waiting on a coach or a starter? Might be waiting on a couple people still, so just hang tight with us, audience. Getting close to, to take off here. I want to give a big happy birthday to our founder and chief executive King Killer, who's uh, been working his arse off around the clock, running the ESCA advanced team, the intermediate team, the new Valorant team, and the streaming and casting teams, and also getting jerseys made for us. So, happy King birthday! <laughs> yeah. Okay, there he is. He's a hair tipsy in chat already. There, there we go. <laughs> Carve, thank you. I'll I'll let you handle the the typing in chat. I guess we're gonna need to get some new tier subscription and ggpr emotes up tonight we'll be doing that after the stream so anyone who happens to subscribe thank you you'll be able to watch this ad free and you'll also have access to the new tier and uh sub specific emotes and this is september so you do get it at a discounted price, and it's free if you haven't used your Amazon Prime subscription yet this month, as many of you already know. And it looks like we have 10 members in here, 11 technically, maybe, with a coach in here. So let's just buckle down and give both teams a moment to adjust their settings and shoot some balloons over in lunch area here. <laughs> Once again, you're not, you're technically not required to sub, but we do appreciate the support. We are gonna be casting every ESCA advanced and intermediate match that ggpr and ggpr academy has scheduled this season and future seasons moving forward once again this is hamtaro and carvelin on the cast here both members of the ggpr content creation and casting team and we're probably about Five to ten minutes from a live on three here. As I was saying earlier, I'm definitely interested to see how aggressive GGPR ends up being on terrorist side. I talked to them privately multiple times after the last match. Um. They told me about the serious hours they've been putting in on overpass and kind of their mindset about being more aggressive this match. I would say that overpass is maybe not quite as difficult of a map as train last week, but um still a pretty difficult map compared to a more standard dust 2 cash mirage inferno i mean i want to see what this has today because train gave us some pretty good plays last week you know 
Train is just like I ah, train train just gives me anxiety <laughs> just like even seeing it in Discord, like, alright, two train matches coming up. I'm like, geez, I'm not even playing in the match and I'm sitting here like, oh man. <laughs> There's just so many situations with the verticality on train. Um or even just the close angles at Ivy and at Upper. Like, I feel you could just get, like, aced, even on a gun round, like, instantly on train, if, if there's just one slight mishap. Even if you don't accidentally team flash, even if all your nades are on point, there's just so many situations on train where you're forced into narrow corridors, which we all know is somewhat of a counter-strike player's nightmare is to be lined up behind your teammates in a narrow corridor and i will say overpass does have a lot of narrow corridors but fortunately there is a little bit of breathing room out at mid and fountain i think this match is truly comes down to one single spot on this map and that's mid and bathrooms because who because you're not going to be able to go b every round that that goes for both teams it, it b is just too much of a, a choke haven both of the entrances to be so it looks like we're going live on knife round here we'll, we'll see who gets the advantage are we live 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 yeah, get right. your get so, your so rabbits what, foot strat, out. What's the strat here? I guess may now? technically GGPR could jump off the fountain. It looks like they already did though. They're moving forward because looks like DOF wants them to fight them in the interior here. GGPR it says that's fine with us because we'll <laughs> come right in there. Narrow corridor or not? That's kind of the tight corners I was referring to, even though I didn't really mean. Uh, for knife round to be <laughs> close corners. All right, we got we got Twizzy in chat saying Jay will drop a forty. So let's oh keep that yeah, in mind. well that, that's the prediction. With our Jay response. is our nearly rank G superstar. So let's see. Jay's definitely been pretty consistent. I I hope he doesn't get cherry picked to the advanced team. They're they're gonna need him here in I am. Okay, DOF potentially going up towards mid to bathroom. They're maybe trying to make a little bit of noise towards B. No, not at all. They're aggressively moving up towards A. This is kind of that... Oh, yummy! With two great headshots, but Foreman returning fire with a headshot of his own. And it looks like DOF is probably going to be able to get the C4 down unless some... Oh! No, some action from Jay, but it's not going to be enough to get the C4 down. Alani taking out Daze. Noda still in the sight. Alani with a really nice shot there and then getting the final kill onto Peevish. That was some great play from Alani and Yummy. Yummy really starting out the wrong strong. Alani uh, ending it there. Well, it looks like DOF's going for a full save carve. GGPR already dropping a smoke and a molly near mid lunch area. Fortunately, not on top of each other. And Day's getting hit with an early HE. I believe that was Noda's HE. Peevish coming around long. He's maybe going to do that quick, cheeky boost onto the little wall there at long. Alani a little bit out of position here, but he's gonna make up for it on the mind lapse, but He does go down to Foreman not gonna matter though. He did enough damage to potentially Get his assist there. Foreman's already down to 28. There's no way he's gonna pull this off against three GGPR members. Noda is gonna reinforce my statement uh, with a I scout I was shot. watching Noda that whole time and he was taking chunks of damage, but just Looked like it was calm, collected, and just kept taking his shots. 
Yeah, that's uh, when I got onto him on, at the end there. Yeah, he was already in the red, but still holding his angle like a confident boss. Kind of just as to say, yeah, take take your shot at me. I'll either buy next round or I'll react quicker than you, flat out. <laughs> well, it looks like uh, we have Dean Online friends. They, they they purchased this round at least, so their their economy's a little little hurting right now. But let's see what happens. Yeah, it looks like they were somehow able to get five helmets on T on uh on DOF spy here. Taking out Yummy. I believe Simplicity may have accidentally Molotov Yummy earlier in the round there. That's why you're gonna see a team kill assist there. Jay is gonna be looking down at connector. He just barely misses the M4 body shots there. And Alani with his nice M4A4 desolate space skin. Holding mid slash bathroom area. Node is going to be playing dedicated A long for the majority of this half, I'm sure. Unfortunately, Mind Lapse coming up huge, taking out Alani and Noda onto A. Foreman, he doesn't know that there's already a man in the smoke. They're not gonna matter because he's gonna crouch and is more than safe to get the C4 down. He's gonna have to check bank here. He's not gonna hit that initial reaction shot, but he's gonna clean it up afterwards onto Simplicity there. And it looks like Jay is definitely going to be better off saving here. What are your thoughts on the financial situation here, Carr? Right now, both teams seem a little, you know, a little similar. They think GGPR still has an advantage right now, but let's see what they do, what they buy what they want to push with you had pointed out at the beginning of last round that there, you were essentially foreshadowing some potential money issues there and unfortunately ggpr is going to have to settle for three deagles a silenced usp and a five seven this round They'll be going up against an almost completely fully nade stacked DOF. Who has already used three nades and still has nine grenades left. Compared to GGPR Academy's zero utility nades at the moment. And Yummy is going to shut me up. With a 50 caliber headshot onto Peevish. Alani, maybe a little bit too bold here. He doesn't have armor. He's still moving up. This is his real crosshair he uses because I'm actually friends with him on Steam. That's why you saw the crosshair change. He's going downstairs. Simplicity getting taken out at B, though. Some sort of pie and die. Oh, and they don't know. Noda still in the sight. Noda almost getting a third. He's going to get the assist for the third. He's essentially, he pretty much got the hat trick there and set up Jay to get the fourth and fifth. That was an absolutely ridiculous round. And that is by far the play of the game so far by Noda. And that's going to allow him to spend $7,200 on an op armor and a diffusal kit along with full nades see what i'm noticing is that no to play is just like silent cool chill collected and he just waits you know until he gets his angle and then he goes yeah and i think overpass especially ct side that's just that's really the mindset they need right now they unfortunately dropped their first two matches of the season, but both to really good teams. Both were ESCA main caliber teams. Uh, the second team they lost to was actually main last season, I believe, or the majority of the team was. Yummy's going to take out a second member of DOF. And only one member of DOF left with 18 HP. That's some sort of pie with a... 50 caliber desert eagle he's gonna maybe want to save his deagle but he's not gonna be able to because simplicity 
smelled that there was somebody back there. He smelled blood, Carve. There was a man dripping blood in the back of that <laughs> corridor. Once again, happy birthday to King Killer. If you're still out there watching on your TV or wherever you are, on your iPad, your phone, we love you. Noda getting a huge kill onto Peevish at mid, coming out super early. Mind Labs not taking that AK-47 shot onto Noda, or, or that may have been Simplicity, excuse me, J Leader actually it was, who had the point, it's Alani and J Leader onto A, and they were both visible, but Foreman did not take the shot, and he's going to pay for it because Simplicity full-blown flanked him after he didn't take that shot. I don't mean to sound too critical, but DOF certainly had a, a chance at getting a B pick there. They, they were not blind, and the tunnel corridor was clear. They should have just taken that AK shot and gone from there. Noda going for a, a superstar shot there. Not quite hitting it, unfortunately. Noda's gonna miss the flank shot, but he's gonna make up for it right there with a nice firm shot onto Mind Lapse and finishing the round on the days. The control from Noda on point, as Carvelim's been mentioning. We're seeing it right there. So is Noda your favorite academy player, Carr? I mean, I'm, I'm right now I'm just stuck on watching it. <laughs> his, you know, his view, it, it's, it's the trigger discipline, it, it's it's the angles he's holding. He knows what he's doing, so it's really exciting to watch. Wow, yeah, it's... He's, he, this is his match. J Leader is my favorite academy player, followed by Yummy. Simplicity going huge there! Trying to gain my, my compliments. Alani is gonna return fire and there's only one member of DOF left. It's peevish. He's only got a, a tech nine with a little under twenty four hundred dollars left. If I was if I was at his home right now, I would tap him on the shoulder and I'd be like, dude, I don't know if you should flank down there. I mean I know I would want to do that too. Uh, I feel like GGPR is going to turn around in time, aren't they? Are they not, Carve? I'm just watching, seeing how it's going to play out. And no, oh, Noda smells blood <laughs> and Peevish is down. It might be, it might be Noda's game today. For I, sure. I think he's got some upgrades on this op. <laughs> Just a, a blood scanner and some night vision. Take a look at the eco situation. Looks like DOF's really hurting. They might have four spot here, but let's see how it's going to play G out. Yeah, GGPR Academy going up 6-1 to one on DOF. DOF actually has hit some pretty nice shots this game. But it just hasn't been enough. Oh, taking out yes, Yummy at mid, though. Re no to returning fire with his op, fortunately. Alani getting another. I don't mean to say fortunately too many times. This is a, a somewhat unbiased cast, even though Carv and I are members of the GGPR content team. Here's Jay Leader going down into Connector. He's getting backed up by his, his boys, Alani and Co. They're foreman. I don't know if he quite knows how close GGPR is. They're going to come out monster and Noda hitting a ridiculous reaction shot again. Foreman really did not have a chance there, but Day is getting two kills of his own. Two really nice kills and then Mind Lapse finishing up onto Noda. And I believe, yes, he did pick up Noda's op and GGPR not in a terrible money situation, but... I mean, Noda went ahead and got another op, so let's see what happens. I mean, he is a monster with that op. He's, the angles and the shots he's been taking, real quick, real precise. Yeah, unfortunately, Yummy and Alani not going to have head armor. We'll see if they're able to 
play just safe enough. Oh, Simplicity getting a headshot onto Foreman. There must have been... Days returning fire onto Simplicity, but before that, there must have been some slight miscommunication from DOF with a Molotov or an HE, because it looked like there was a team kill assist right there out of the gates. Noda holding a firm bathroom angle. Yummy. Backing him up onto lunch area here. Mind lapse. Nice little full utility into sight, but Alani's going to go down right after that. And it's not necessarily because Alani was blind. There was just a few too many angles for him to hold there as he was in the center of the site. There's some sort of pie who's probably going to have to watch the connector flank. GGPR is going to save, actually, though, so he's maybe still should watch connector as he exits. But looks like DOF picking up a third round here, Carve, and gaining a little bit of momentum back. Okay, some exit frags here, though. Just doing a quick audio check. Looks like we're good. Carve, you're sounding good. Testing, testing. Am I still here? Yeah. Alright, cool. Alright. This is where things start to get pretty serious this is kind of where either ggpr kind of creates some distance for themselves pulls away by a few rounds or if dof is just like yo like no we're, we're tying this up we're oh <laughs> huge pick from noda at long there looked like peevish thought he was maybe going to be able to use kind of a strafe tactic with the far back rock there but in my history of playing quite a few overpass matches it's never really a good idea to peek long if you know that cts are holding that with an op even if you know the cts are playing passively in sight with an op they could always move up to that corner or that wall, that short wall where Noda was, which is exactly what happened. And they should have already known that Noda's been opping this whole game. They should have already known before the match started, actually, that he's their designated opper. Alani taking out Days with a FAMAS and another kill onto Mind Lapse as he had have picked up an AK directly after that. Jay Leader is gonna get a quick trade, and Yummy is gonna clean things up on the foreman he had simplicity to back him up there just in case anything went wrong it's a good thing yummy said alive there just because he went down to zero last round now i got a little money going some good weapons going looks like this could be a a Deagle B rush, but not anymore because GGPR's Molotovs are just way too on point this game. Oh! Unfortunately, some sort of pie picking up two Deags there. Foreman in kind of a tense spot. But he's still going to pick up the kill on the yummy. Oh, Noda. Noda is terrifying with this op. Getting he's two yeah, two mid-range op kills there, which sets up Jay for the final kill. Actually, one of those op kills was pretty close range, which I think we, we all know whether you're scoping or no scoping close range. It, Take some pretty Rips. serious reaction. Skill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, it takes some pretty serious reaction time to be hitting those shots first try, so.
Please excuse the peacocks that my microphone may have picked up there. Alani taking out Days at short. DOF, four members remaining. Yes, we do have peacocks in Southern California. It's a long story. Alani tossing a flash grenade at short. He's going to be falling back here. Gavatron, thank you for reminding us you're not Euro. I think we already knew that. Peevish is looking down monster at B still. Noda still kind of tagging his eyes over at bathroom. Some sort of pie landing some significant... Yeah, I think it was 60 damage there onto Alani. And that's going to set up Foreman to finish off Alani right there. Some sort of pie is going to use multiple utility. Moving up towards A. They already know there's a man back by bank. It was Noda and some sort of pie is going to land the headshot in that. Molotov's going to be just next to him. He's still going to get the C4 off. going to throw a Molotov of his own. Over at bank, let's see what kind of rotation GGPR potentially has here. I don't, I do not think they're saving J Leader going down after being boosted there on the side of the wall. Simplicity also going down in bathroom and GGPR still in the lead, eight to four, but DOF. That was just a good run for DOF there. Yeah, DOF definitely by no means is out of this match. Still definitely in contention. They have Peevish back on the op. Strangely, Peevish is still looking for his first kill. There it is right there on the note of all people. I thought Peevish had already landed a few shots earlier but apparently not foreman's gonna pick up another on alani and some sort of pie with some really nice ak accuracy there at the end looked like five or six immediate chest shots on the last two members of ggpr academy there Well, just have Noda with an op, and everyone else looks like they're saving. Yeah, oh, Peevish. He's definitely alive again, and this is definitely going to be a DOF round. Peevish with, what was that, a quick two op kills there to it, open up the round? Exciting. Yeah. It, it <laughs> as soon as you pointed out that Peevish had bought that op, he... He's gotten three kills since then. He About bought an op in the game. But just unfortunately, he got, he got picked very early, and I think now that he's back on the op, he feels confident. Yeah, I believe that's what happened, too. He wasn't able to pick up any kills on the eco rounds, etc. So he was in a, a bit of a rough situation there, both financially and emotionally, potentially. But here we go. Foreman's going to throw a flash up at short, but GGPR had already Falling back into site. Noted already fallen back onto long site area there too. J Leader, I believe, is already receiving some comms there from Yummy, who unfortunately just got killed himself. Foreman with not the best Molotov. That was a bit of an unnecessary Molotov, but alas, Alani is still going to go down there. He didn't realize he was getting flanked by DOF at, at long already there, but I believe that was mind lapse that was already looking down long. And Foreman picking up J Leader who's coming out of bank with nothing but a pistol and unfortunately no to losing his op that was the last round of the half and we we've got ourselves a game here ladies and gentlemen yeah. this is eight to it seven like dof was just warming up ggpr academy up by one round 
which means this is going to be a huge pistol round. A Noda with an AK. Yeah, that's uh. Is, is that some foreshadowing that he's not going to be opping this half? No, I think he, I think he's just getting his AK warm ups on. I suppose terrorist side is you still kind of do need a dedicated op on terrorist side on this map. So we'll see how this plays out here. Like I said, this is a huge pistol round. And we're going live. Looks like we're going five Glocks. No, not five Glocks. Looks like there's a P250 in there. Two P250s. Three Glocks and three sets of armor. One defusal kit on DOF right now. Simplicity just barely missing the dink there on the wall boost. But he's going to return fire with... Nearly two dinks of his own. Three members of DOF already down in Noda using the very last bullet of his clip and landing the headshot. The level of confidence from Noda this game is unmatched by anyone else in the server. Except for maybe Simplicity who's landed quite a few headshots of his own this game. But everyone on GGPR doing well right now. Some of these weapon skins are just really, really cool. <laughs> yeah, the Nomad Knife Fade is a nice one. I'm such an old man that I didn't get too into the Nomad Knife by the time it came out. It's uh, something that came out within the past year and a half, I believe. In GGPR Academy, already in to be bombsite here. Noda putting the C4 down. He's got the code memorized by heart. And he's looking over at Connector. For any of you who don't play Counter-Strike, no, you don't actually have to memorize the code. I but. was going to ask. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There was, was, there was, there was no, code? There was no crazy update. <laughs> I just needed to mess with all of our Valorant and Overwatch viewers. Here's Mind Lapse over here in Bathroom just hanging out still. King Killer, we see you, brother. Cheers, cheers on the night. Cheers to all the lads out in Kansas. Carve and I will be seeing you all next year at some point, I'm sure. If not there, then I'm sure out here in, in California at some point. That was yeah. a solid round from GGPR there. That rush bomb, damn. Does King Killer know that he's welcome to stay at my house? Does he even know I have my own place? We'll get we'll have to get into this later. Here here's DOF pushing up Fountain but sending Foreman down with the Desert Eagle Blaze taking out Alani and maybe getting a second. Oh god, he got a second onto J Leader there. But Noda's just like, yo, I'm gonna plant the C4. I don't even need a Pop wall in I, Yeah, I don't even need a wall in front of me because I already can smell where the enemies are. He smells blood over in water right now. Look at this. Smells them. That's why the Molly's going off. The unreal timing on the Molly just as the smoke grenade ends. The smoke wasn't even off the screen yet. Yummy getting one with the Galil, but Mind Lapse returning a frag with the Molotov. But it's not going to matter because DOF did not have a kit. I believe they probably could have had it if they had a kit there, but. That's an exciting round though when, you know, GGPR was all down, but they still couldn't get the Diffuse off. Yeah, that's probably about a 
I think they could have got it with a five second defusal most likely, but definitely not with a ten second. Notice back on the op. <laughs> J already getting off a nice H E at mid simplicity, peeking long, showing his own level of confidence. Like I mentioned earlier, did Noda hit that spam shot? Yes, he did. Peevish is down to 38 health. He's falling back into sight. He's really got nowhere to turn right now. He's getting pushed, Carve. This is insane. Simpli oh. Two members of DOF down. I'm so excited. I can't believe my voice isn't cracking. Jay getting the C4 <laughs> down. And he's still going to get a smoke off towards spawn. Simplicity. Getting a headshot onto some sort of pie through the smoke grenade. My blood pressure is pumping even though I'm pretty sure GGPR is going to be able to clean up this round. Gotta breathe, Ham. Just breathe. Just hold me, Carve. <laughs> Bring me home. Don't worry, everyone. I, I mean, I I am physically home, but just just bring us home. Another round for GGPR. Oh, there's King, King Killer. Killer. Like he, he hearts ya. See, King Killer doesn't know. We've already got a whole land set up for him here. A whole guest bedroom <laughs> that's just waiting for him. It says King Killer on a projector screen on the wall. The LED lights around it. A Kansas City Chiefs flag next to the bed. And Alani peeking out long with simplicity. The Texas Rattlesnake, as he calls his AK-47, but Foreman is going to take out Noda. He doesn't care about rattlesnake skins or not. He's going to be peeking with his 50 caliber. And Alani peeking into sight with his neon pink AK-47, but Peevish flying out Keanu Reeves style with that CZ in the bathroom. But fortunately, GGPR is still going to follow up with three frags there. Meaning DOF's only got two members left that only have a combined health of 90. Because Mind Lapse just went down to four health from that Molotov that was over on stairs. Yummy. Only 19 health. He picks up the C4. I don't want to talk too loud because I don't want DOF to hear us in the site <laughs> because i'm st i'm standing in the site with ggpr academy right now carve standing next to me with the camera and yummy huge headshot days knows where the last member of ggpr is he already saw his arm he's taking out a usp he's trying to get an ak he does and he takes out yummy and this time he does have a defusal kit, and even if he didn't, he probably could have still defused. Really exciting play from both teams there, though. Real exciting. King Killer saying he's like a warlock. He already knew. Wow. He knows everything. It's one of my first Warcraft characters was a warlock, and then I I took the warrior route for a while. Did a lot of tanking. See, my first character and it's still my main is my druid. Wow, However, it yeah. was Alliance and now I'm Two of my best no. friends are just druids. Druids, you, got, you know, the jack of all trades are exciting. Legendary 1H and Carvelin 1H, both GGPR content creators and streamers, and both druid mains. As we jump back here into the match, Foreman is already peeking out to the left side of bathroom he's staring down short but you know what he's not gonna see anyone because simplicity and the boys are already in to be laying down headshots but some sort of pie getting an insane double headshot into smoke i'm not gonna lie that was an incredibly timed and well placed shot takes a lot of skill to land something like that foreman Still throwing more utilities into sight. GGPR is not going to be blinded by it. In fact, 
Noda is gonna pick up two kills of his own, followed up by a third from Jay. And Noda picking up a third frag of his own, completing the hat trick as if he's Alex Ovechkin in the playoffs. And here we go. By the way, the op that Noda's up running right now eight. is the most adorable gun I've ever seen. I want one. <laughs> We're gonna have to buy all of the GGPR advanced and intermediate skins before next match so we can just channel their vibes. Yummy, unfortunately, going down to 47, 23 HP just from the Molotov and a few pistol bullets. He's bleeding from the chest, he's bleeding from the shoulder, he's bleeding from the calf, but he's got backup. Noda. Throwing utility and HE grenades below heaven. GGPR doesn't know that there was a man heaven. They do now because Peevish landing one one dig, a second one dig onto J leader Alani, returning fire with the Neon Revolution. One of my favorite skins in the game. By far my favorite AK 47 skin. It's just so freaking bright and that is maybe why alani was able to kill foreman is because that ak-47 just makes a man's confidence rise carve Looks like this is already gonna be a fast B again. I think GGPR was feeling the vibes from last round, but DOF had a really good traditional B setup with a fast rotate through heaven and some well placed smoke grenades. The mollies the last couple of rounds too have been dealing a lot of damage to GGPR. If you take a look at the economy right now, GGPR is really hurting, so they really need this round. And again, remind me, because I'm still noticing, yeah, 16 is match point, right? Or yeah, like always. Point. Always MR 16, yeah, unless we go OT. It used to be MR 12, but Foreman is not known to GGPR until Alani got through with the tech there. Mind lapse coming up through lower. Yeah, Valorant takes its max rounds from old school CS. Yummy getting another headshot onto some sort of pie. Simplicity falling up with a tech headshot of his own. Days cleaning up. Yummy. Noda falling back into mid. Let's see what happens here, boys. If GGPR can just clean up this last kill, they can go into a match point situation, which historically Overpass has been a pretty difficult map to come back from match point on. So let's see how this plays out. Looks like DOF going for a slightly more aggressive setup this round, which is not going to pay off early. Noda already taking out Foreman, Yummy taking out a second member, DOF with only three members remaining. One member remaining of DOF. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is game. Victory for GGPR Academy, and they go to one and two on the season. What I learned today 
was if Noda's offing, just run. Don't don't even push. <laughs> <laughs> there were some great reaction shots from Noda that game. Oh, is Noda joining us in the chat there? Noda coming up big tonight. Simplicity, J, and everyone else on GGPR also coming through with some huge AK headshots at different times. Noda also with that huge 5-7 play on B side earlier in the game, which was nearly a three kill. He actually got an assist on the third kill there and that round was turned into a victory, which definitely helped out the scoreboard there in the long run since uh, things did get a little testy there at the end of the first half when it came to an 8-7 overall situation. So congrats to the boys, GGPR Academy, picking up their first dub of the season. And for Carvelin, and on behalf of all of GGPR Esports, this is Hamtaro signing off. Please join us tomorrow night, same time, 9 p.m. Central Time for our boys in advance showing us what's good and getting one step closer to that cash prize pool and of course getting moved up to Mountain Dew League eventually. Carve, do you want to give the the people your final sign off? Uh I don't know what else to say other than I'm excited <laughs> for tomorrow's match. And just catch us tomorrow. Amen. Glad today wasn't a forfeit. And uh, fortunately, Carve and I will indeed be around tomorrow as long as it's not 121 degrees in Los Angeles again. And on, <laughs> we on, don't know. Yeah, More we don't, on fire. yeah, we don't know quite yet. But <laughs> until then, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Look uh, at our Twitter, Instagram youtube tonight to see the highlights and on that note we love you all hashtag we are ggpr see you guys later